I don't care how you say it, what they say about it or whatever like that, but when they say you're committed, you might as well go through. It's like taking off a Band-Aid. Nah, that's never a good idea. Oh, this is gonna be a costly one. Good afternoon everybody, welcome back to another upload of It's a Dire Thing. Rob here, thank you very much. And before we go any further ahead, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the notification, this way you'll always be up to date. So, what am I doing here with my Tenere and why did I say it's gonna be a costly one? Well, because, oh my God, it hurts and it is going to be a costly one. Um, luckily enough for me that I do work for the company that I can get some parts at a little bit of a discount, but oh my God, I, I even did the math for you guys as a retail value, ouch. Um, what am I saying here is, uh, you know what, if there's any of you engineers or the designers out there uh, for the motorcycles, and especially when it comes to the off-road bikes, uh, please just take an extra few minutes and pay attention to when it comes to interlocking body panels together, that you make yourselves a fuse, a system where only one panel, if anything happens, one panel takes the brunt of it and destroys. Whereas on something like this, we've got three different body panels here and they're all interlocking into each other. If one fails, um, causes actually all three to fail. So this is where we're at today. I've got to take a look at my body panels here because I snagged it underneath a tree. Uh, somebody in a trail actually didn't cut the trees down low enough. I had got myself stuck in some high grass, some brush, and there was a couple of trees. They were only two inch trees, but they were up 15 inches high. And then it got a, caught in a little bit of mud, which then that one of the trees sunk underneath here. And as I rocked the bike out, trying to get myself free, it caught onto this and just ripped the whole side of my Tenere all apart. It was absolutely a nightmare. So that's where they say it's like a band-aid, just rip it off. Well, I can tell you, no man, that's not what we wanna do. So uh, I'm going to assess the damage right here. So I know that this body panel is broken. This body panel is broken and this body panel is broken. There's a quick uh, spring nut that connects onto this body panel, which that has ripped off. This panel here has a little clip that kind of goes inside that sinks into this, that's broken off. So that renders these two here actually no longer usable correctly. And then this black panel here, uh, even though it's got a rubber grommet and a collar, that has actually pulled out and ripped out as well because it's, it's tightened on with this bolt. So all these three pieces by pulling out this one part here has destroyed everything. Um, so we're looking at a Canadian value of around $800 on a retail. That's just very expensive. Uh, so let's take a look, see what, uh, I'm not gonna be replacing it right now. I'm just gonna be fixing it and do the best that I can in order to make it still functional. But let's assess the damage um, as to what happens when you pull on this panel outwards. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> I've kind of got it exposed here. So, I mean, it's only a couple of bolts and a couple of little riv nuts to take this whole body panel apart. So what happened, the story is, is we're doing a couple of trails and uh, they're double track style trails and whatnot like that, but then there's a couple of little water crossings. And so there was this water hole that we were coming up to and it was quite far and and so we said you know what let's stop take a look uh, because we've seen a bypass around it but the bypass also had a lot of mud and we're like well man if they're doing a bypass and a bypass through this mud um that kind of raises a little bit of suspicion and, and worry about that actual water hole that we had to cross so you know we said uh, we decided we'll stop our bikes before it and uh, we'll get ourselves a branch from the woods and we'll do a couple of poke tests and just to see how actually deep this water crossing was going to be. So anyways, as uh, we started to assess that, um, we did notice that the water was actually quite deep and then it, the, the, the ground, um, the surface of it was really soft. So even though you're doing a poke test, uh, once you start kind of going through it, um, that could kind of get really bad. Uh, real fast. So, you know, what we said, let's take more of our chances through the muddy side portion bypass of it because we did a couple of poke tests on that. So, 
Um, we said, you know what, at least it goes to a firm ground. It's a bit of mud. So I said with the three of us, because it was the three of us that were riding, um, we said, you know what, we can kind of probably muscle it through. So nevertheless, we ended up doing that, but because it was a bypass around a couple of trees and this and that and all that, and unfortunately, sorry guys, I don't have any pictures to kind of show you exactly what happened. Uh, as I said, um, there are a couple of people that hadn't been by before and they cut down little two inch uh, trees uh, so it was like a stagger of three of them there that were kind of hidden in the brush and so I got myself stuck into the mud uh, quite deep actually um, trying to go through this bypass and in order to get myself out I had to kind of lay the bike down and pull it out a bit and get it back onto a some harder surface so I can continue to run so as I did that the bike kind of tilted over and that's where those branches or the trees were that we didn't see in the high brush and, and I pulled it out and once I did that it kind of hooked itself over these trees and as I brought it back up these trees now were under here and they caught, caught under the body panel and as I lifted it back up it just ripped everything out so the damage on that and, and this is really unfortunate because you got a spring clip here which now you can see is missing um, so that ripped out of that so that broke this body panel on this body panel here you have a little flat tab that sticks out that slides into this portion so that broke that body panel off of that because it went like this and once it went like that then it kind of broke off that way so it broke off that tab it broke off this tab so now that renders these two pieces completely useless which is a really annoying they should have put I don't know they should have figured out a different better way that you know if one breaks it doesn't break the other whereas clearly it has broken both um, so just that one tab is broken on this now it's still held with three bolts um, oh there's another break here as well so there's another tab there so and that one slides into there so it broke off of this and this but it is still held with three bolts and I am going to continue to run with this I'm just going to kind of come up with a fix um, as you can see here it's broken off this completely off so this has this whole panel here has pulled out uh, I lost the rib nut here I still had this rib nut lost this one and I lost this one um, so right now what I would have to do in order to get everything back together in perfect working order interlinking with each other and that's the problem right it, it interconnects with each other is I'd have to replace this top tank panel this black piece panel and then the actual side panel here and then you still got all the graphics that you got to put on too right so that's uh, that's where it starts to come costly anyways I am not doing that not here not now no way we're gonna just figure it out um, super super frustrating isn't it oh my god very frustrated so I got this black tab here and this black tab here but I don't think that connects into anything here um, I'll have to see what we have for that, but uh, yeah, super frustrating. <laughs> that goes up here, but there's nothing in here for these things, so I'll take a look on this side and we'll see. But um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to, I still have this black tab here with a spring nut here so I'm just going to actually apply some put this back in I'm going to apply some glue um, hopefully that will help hold it in place um, like I said I still got the front piece here that's going to hold it well in place and this one here I'm going to kind of zip tie this together here so this doesn't pull out I'm going to zip tie this one here and we'll see what we have to do here and then with these body panels here that will also help hold this all in place with this so it should do us good for the summer, hopefully. Um, if I was running engine guards, would that probably help? Yeah, it probably would stop it from pulling out. But then again, there are so many other hiccups with the engine guards going pushing in and then damaging your plastic. So I decided I'd rather not hold that this year, but uh, we'll see. Once I get the fix done, once I decide what I'm going to do further on, um, whether if I'm going to continue to run it without the engine guards or maybe put the engine guards on and if I do I'm definitely going to get them powder coated. I'm not going to keep them black. So um, You know what? 
I think I'll go with this color, right, uh, on the engine guards, and that would be the genuine Yamaha engine guard, so it'll definitely look good. So let me get this worked out. Let me get this fixed up. Uh, but uh, yeah, guys, you know what? Moral of the story, no matter what you're doing, if you're going through the water puddle or if you're going through a water hole, you could do in a bypass, taking unfamiliar territory, any kind of terrain, you know what? Do your due diligence. Take a minute, really inspect the, the surrounding area that you got to go through, especially if you're working in something uh, which could be semi treacherous. And uh, you know what? It's going to save you in the long run. So it is what it is. It's part of the game, it's part of the sport. It's not like we want to do that part, but you know what? It's to be expected at some times. But uh, we'll, get, we'll get her going again next time. And uh, until then, y'all be safe. Be good, have fun, enjoy. Don't forget though, keep it covered. <laughs> oh boy. Here, I'll, uh, I'll get it all fixed up and, uh, and we can do a little nice uh, walk around of the bike there, kind of give you a show off of what it's, uh, what it's like, but I love the Tenere. It's an awesome bike still. All right, so this is what we did for uh, our temporary fix until I have to replace the body panels, which would probably be uh, uh, not for quite some time. But uh, uh, you know what? Uh, I think it's going to last for what we need here. So uh, I basically re-glued the plastic tab back into this, and now uh, that's just curing there. And then I still got the spring nut back onto that one. Um, I've zip tied the attachment here because I don't have a riv nut for now and then I've did another zip tie here because this again this is broken here so I don't want to have to replace all this thing just because of that right so this zip tie here is attaching from the bottom piece around the actual bracket here which basically holds onto it so that definitely still holds it in place um, I can see that there's a bit of looseness here so I have to see what's going on with that, but that's just feels like it's just a tab that kind of goes over. Um, that's just a resting point. So between that bracket now that's fixed, this mounting point here, this mounting point, and then these three mounting points here, this whole body panel should hopefully sit on uh, at least a little bit better and not fly off again uh, while I'm traveling at higher speeds. Um, so I think for the most part, we're pretty much good on that. Um, so let's get this body panels all back on and hope for the best. But uh, yeah, that was, a, that was definitely a, not, uh, not something that uh, I was expecting to, to deal with. <laughs> uh, but it is what it is, right? So there we go. We'll just kind of get everything set back into place here. And uh, yeah, 